Hi everyone, I hope you're well. So today I want to talk about Geek Love. Um, this is a novel by Catherine Dunn. It was considered, or at least I found it through a list of the most disturbing books of all time or something like that. Um, quite a while ago, apparently this is very well known among the more um, disturbing or dark or, you know, edgy books out there. So this is fiction. It is a novel about a circus performer um, family and the parents um, basically try to deliberately make circus freaks, if you will, um, as the book refers to them oftentimes. Um, they basically experiment with drugs and stuff like that to, in order to make um, deformed children so that those children can work for them um, and basically make them money just based on who they look, uh, based on who they are, based on what they look like. So I already start off with the bang, right? But this book is definitely not as heartless as you might expect it to be based on the premise. Um, I think, you know, in terms of writing style, that's probably the strongest point of this book. Um, it's something that a lot of people, sometimes the people that gave these negative reviews um, did mention it as a plus or, you know, a positive aspect of the book is that it does have a very good writing style. So for style, I give it a full star. Um, it's a very good style, like I said. It has really vivid lines, a lot of, um, honestly, parts that are very impressive and that you wouldn't think to compare one thing with another or to describe one thing in a certain way. Um, and the descriptions are so... They really give you a good image of what's going on, but at the same time, they don't just describe it in a dual way. This is really colorful in terms of the use of the words ways of describing things without being, um, you know, without being flowery, without being um, intentionally obscure. Sometimes there's a few awkward lines that rely on a lot of adverbs, but that's really not that big of a deal and it doesn't happen very often. So for storyline, I give it half a star. Um, I think that the present time of the story, because it basically takes place in two different times. One is the present time, where the narrator and main character is kind of, um, in her, I think, 40s or mid-30s or something like that. And there's also some flashbacks to when she was a child and then a tween and teen. And I think the present time storyline when she's an adult is a little kind of cynical and a little bit... It does lack a little bit of a heart, but most of the book does take place in the time of her past. I think my biggest problem with the storyline is the last third or so of the novel, which is kind of rushed and a lot of really big things happen that don't really get developed that much and there's not a lot of reflection on them, a lot of context on them um, and sometimes I felt like it was a little forced for one of the characters, the more, I guess, villainous characters to basically do all of the things that he did unchecked without having the parents really interfere that much even though they supposedly were so family focused. And I guess that was part of the, I guess, you know, message or the point of the, the novel itself, the fact that these people claim to be so, you know, family focused and all these things when in reality um, they were kind of hypocrites. But even then it doesn't seem very realistic because their children were barely like young adults, kind of like older teens at this point, and they were, st and the parents weren't that old. Um, at this point where all of these things were going down so you know the children are it's not like the parents are super old and the ch children are like fully grown adults and they have power of the over the parents the parents could have kind of stopped this if they had wanted to really I think um, there was a little bit of a dynamic where the oldest child did have a lot of power especially in financial terms but even then he could have still, you know, obeyed the parents. There was still a little bit of that authority going on. The parents could still have a little bit of leverage. And the actual climax and the ending of a story, so like, let's say like the last 50 pages or so, uh, were also like extremely rushed, even more than um, the general for last half, last third of the novel. And it barely feels like a real conclusion to all the concepts that were basically thrown at you, you know, all these things with the cult, and with the family unraveling and all these things happening, it didn't really feel like the ending gave any sort of conclusion to all of these problems that had been caused by the things that happened in the past. For example, we don't really know for sure what ended up happening with the cult, you know? 
whether anyone went to prison or like how many people had really died and to some degree it also feels like a lot of the characters who you know did a lot of bad things didn't really have to face any sort of consequence which i understand as more realistic you know in real life people rarely you know they don't necessarily end up in prison just because they did something that was illegal in real life that doesn't always happen but at the same time it felt like the characters who did the worst things were kind of spared from any real consequence because of what the things that really happened during the climax and the ending um, I would say that was pretty light for, you know, what had really been happening. But for the most part, I do feel like especially the first half is really heartfelt. And even though there is a little bit of malice between the children, you can really understand them all, understand where they're all coming from, you know, why people are doing the things that they're doing. And truthfully, there wasn't a single point in the story that could be considered boring to me. Um, there was always something happening, some conflict, some sort of either dangerous situation or just a tense situation going on between them. And in terms of characters, I give it a full star. Um, even a lot of minor or supporting characters were really interesting and very fleshed out. Um, and honestly, the main ones especially felt so real. They were all very, very flat, of course, but also felt like they did have a few um a few good things here and there olympia the narrator feels she's obviously very flawed to say the least but i think that she's also very self-aware several points in the narration she admits when she has been wanting some to to do something evil or when she's wanted someone to be harmed or but she again she can admit to these things um, and it's kind of refreshing, right? Because a lot of other characters in the story seem to constantly want to give of this image of being the good ones when they're obviously not. I cared about what happened to her, to Olympia, and I was on her side the whole time, even though, again, she was very flawed. And that obviously made her just more, and of course that also just made her more realistic and more human to listen to. All of, all of these characters really felt just completely human um, to me. Yeah, they were very, some of them were obviously very weird, but they all felt like they were real people that could exist. So for depth, I give it a half star. Um, there's a lot of interesting views and ideas going on in the, in the story regarding the body, um, amputations, colds, being different and being average. Um, but again, because of the way it ends, I feel like it's not able to be fully developed to the point of seeing the natural consequences of the things that were done. We don't really know how the ending of that cult was portrayed in the news, how that um, affected the outside world. We don't even know that much about how that really affected the whole family. We know a few things, but for the most part, the story is so rushed in that moment that it kind of skips from that moment, that, you know, very conflictive and intense moment to the present day. It feels like you're missing a lot of the important parts of the story. And also this book does have a lot of moments of discussion, discussing um, amputation and things like that. And especially um, it discusses the idea of people um, amputating their own bodies deliberately or having them amputated because they want to get rid of them, get rid of those extremities, basically. And it has a lot of weird ideas going on about the body and, I mean, they are, of course, related to this cult, right? And the cult is essentially about trying to be as different from the average person as possible, which is what a lot of these people apparently were, a lot of the followers of the cult, which we don't really know that much about the people of the cult, but um, it seems that a lot of them for the, were that kind of person who was really average and they wanted to stand out in a way and sometimes, you know, the, the way that they could find was to just be, you know, amputees. But what I did find interesting in this story um, is by the time I, I had uh, started to read it, I had watched a few videos here and there of people who were into um, mostly reaction videos or commentary videos um, reacting or talking about people who make this really, give themselves these, ex these very extreme body modification um, procedures like um, removing their ears, um, sometimes the structure of the nose and things like that. Um, I think I saw Luxiria, Luxiria um, having a couple of videos on this and I thought it was very interesting because it reminded me a lot of that, you know, th those, these people um, sometimes remove body parts or change body parts to the point where 
you start to get the idea that they don't really want to look human in the first place you know they want people to look at them and be like oh my god because we're not talking about people who just have a lot of piercings on their face or just are covered in tattoos you know i'm talking about something different people who basically want to look like a different species maybe these people don't see anything to be proud of in the fact that they're human or maybe they are looking for attention in a very extreme and very permanent way that even could harm them over time um, like Luxuria mentioned, one of these person, one of these people who remove their nose, the structure of their nose, they have a hard time um, showering because they have to cover their nose because, you know, there's, there's the holes here, right? And that person has to kind of cover it in order to shower because they can't breathe um, when there's water running down their face. Some people um, assume that these people are just extremely disturbed and or they're just extremely um, hungry, thirsty for attention. And I don't know why these people do this, but this, this book really reminded me of that because of this idea of needing to be as far from average as possible. And of course, there's a lot of things you can do to stop yourself from being average. But in terms of how you look, I guess there's not a lot you can do. Um, depends on, I guess, where you live, you know? Um, I definitely have noticed that, or a lot of people know already that in small towns and stuff like that, pretty much anything that you do will stand out immediately. Whereas in a big uh, in a big city, nobody really cares. Um, I guess in a big city, you would probably have to look like some sort of lizard creature in order for people to notice your um, your appearance at all. But again, these are the kinds of things that I think the book just really stops short of saying or implying. Um, it kind of keeps itself, of course it's a very insular read because it's, uh, it, it's pretty much only set in these traveling circles um, and they never, they rarely ever go to the outside world so you know more about what these people think about themselves than what, you know, other people think of them. Something else that I wanted to point out is the fact that socially speaking usually um, it is more acceptable to have modifications or surgery that is done to look more normal. It isn't generally acceptable to have procedures, procedures that are um, in any way surgical or real medical if you are not trying to look a little bit, maybe a little bit better like a subtle um, plastic surgery or you are trying to look more normal like someone who maybe was uh, left deformed after an accident that is generally considered the most socially acceptable uh, situation in order to have a plastic surgery or any sort of procedure like that but if you get surgery or you know modifications to look w weirder i guess or to look less normal or to look more attractive or in a way that you perceive to be more attractive but to other people is overdone or exaggerated and straight up ugly not just unacceptable but also people uh, tend to be pretty enraged sometimes by these people um you'll probably notice you know these articles of women for example who have these very extreme lip fillers um people are very angry almost at, at the fact that they consider that to be beautiful but i think these people are clearly fine with the idea of not looking normal and not looking natural and looking a bit something a bit slightly different from human and maybe that's what they want, I guess, at the end of it all. And I guess it's an interesting exercise to see what a person could really, um, could really be thinking, what a person could, who is, you know, deformed or who is very, very different. They have, you know, some sort of congenital defect or something like that. Those people might be looking at the outside world like and what they think other people think of them and all these things. But at the same time, um, I'm not sure how much knowledge the author really does have on this subject, given that, you know, she seems to be, or rather Catherine Dunn died um, a few years ago, so she seems to she seems to have been a, you know, normal person in terms of her appearance anyway. And a lot of people in the reviews, a few people I did see saying that um, there was a person in the reviews who was actually an amputee and he said something about how he kind of resented the way that this book um, represented or rather discussed this idea of being an amputee but at the same time you know all people 
even if they belong to the same group or whatever, they're all different from each other, you know, not one amputee is the same as the other, some might find it a bit different, you know, the experience is different, the concept is different and all these things. So in terms of my enjoyment of the book, I did decide to give it a full star. Um, it's obviously, like I said, really, it's really gross, um, it's definitely a gross read, but it's also kind of heartfelt at several points even. Um, it's kind of on the edge of being a little too reliant on the shock value, but I think it does pull it off. And I also felt really attached to the narrator, um, you know, her obviously being really flawed. She was good-natured in a way, but also not past doing or thinking or feeling things that were wrong. So that means that in total I give this book four stars, which is, I think, the highest rating I have given a book this year. Um, and by the way, I don't think I will be doing a best books that I read in 2021, because there weren't that many that I gave, gave a high rating to, um, again, this is the highest rating, so the highest ratings, aside from this one, were like 3.5 and 3 stars, and I don't really feel passionately enough about those to dedicate a video on them, calling them the best. But I do think I will have a video on the worst, even though there are probably going to be videos, uh, books that I've already made several videos, not several videos, but books that I've already made at least one video about. Um, but I think I want to make it a more ranty video as opposed to going more in-depth about the specific aspects that I didn't like or, you know, having to having to um, stick to the structure of uh, writing style characters, storyline and all that. So I hope you might look forward to that video and I hope you enjoy this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye!